Please be seated. Good afternoon. The court is in session. Could the registry call the roll, please? Thank you, Mr. President. The Tial Chamber 1 of the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, composed of Judge Eric Mons presiding, Judge Egarov, and Judge Florence Rita, is sitting today, first day, 25 February 2010, for the delivery of the judgment in the matter of the prosecution versus FM Setako. Case number ICTR-0481-T. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now the appearance of the parties. Prosecution, please. Good morning, Your Honours. It's good to appear before you once more uh, for the final verdict. Uh, the Office of the Prosecutor is represented today by Mr. Simba Mawere, Mrs. Christiana Forminke, Mrs. Betty Bambazi, and Mr. Liu Nguye, and my humble self, Ifoma Ojemeni Okali. Thank you very much. Please provide the spelling of the two last names on a piece of paper to the court reporters afterwards. Defense. Professor Heinz. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, the defense for uh, Kuna Sitako is represented by co-counsel Kanek Lucia Badu, um, our investigator, Daniel Tawumunzi, and myself, Lennox Hines. Thank you, and if you could equally provide the third name, the spelling, on a piece of paper afterwards. Thank you. The chamber will now read out the summary of the judgment. This case concerns Lieutenant Colonel Ephraim Setako, who hails from Nkuli Commune in Ruhengeri Prefecture. In 1994, he was the head of the Division of Legal Affairs in the Ministry of Defense in Kigali. Based on his alleged acts in Ruhengeri and Kigali, the prosecution has charged him with six counts, genocide or complicity in genocide, murder and extermination as crimes against humanity, and serious violations of common Article 3 to the Geneva <coughs> Conventions and Additional Protocol 2. The defense disputes all charges. The trial opened on 25th August 2008 and closed on 26 June 2009 after 60 trial days. The prosecution presented 21 witnesses and the defense 34, including Colonel Setako. Closing arguments were heard on 5th and 6th November 2009. The chamber is now giving a summary of its findings concerning the allegations against Setako. Only the written judgment is authoritative. It will be available soon after the conclusion of the editorial process. The defense submissions concerning certain fair trial issues are discussed in the judgment and will not be addressed here. But the chamber has disregarded evidence of several accusations because of lack of notice. These events are not included in the present summary. The chamber begins with the killing of Bernard Bayagabe. One prosecution witness testified that from January to March 1994, 
Sitarko attended monthly meetings at the home of Joseph Zirorera in Mokingo commune, Ruhengeri prefecture. There, prominent personalities discussed the extermination of Tutsis. After one such meeting in February 1994, Setarko ordered the witness to kill a Tutsi man named Bayagahe. The chamber has doubt about the witness's account and has not relied on his evidence. The next event is the meeting at the home of Joseph Girodiera's mother. The evidence shows that on the morning of 7th April 1994, militiamen gathered at the Biangabo Trading Center in Mukingo commune and then launched an attack on Tutsis in the neighboring Ruankeri Selil and at the Busogo parish. Hundreds of Tutsis were killed at these locations and their property was looted and destroyed. According to the indictment, the attacks were planned during a meeting of prominent personalities. It had been held earlier that morning at the home of Chiroriera's mother, not far from the trading center. The prosecution relies on three witnesses of whom two allegedly observed Setarko at the house. The defense submits that Setarko was in Kigali on 6 and 7th April. The chamber has doubts about the testimony placing Setarko at the meeting. Adequate corroboration is lacking. Although his alibi in Kigali carries limited weight, the prosecution has not proved beyond reasonable doubt that Setarko assisted in initiating these crimes. Now the meeting at Rukabu's house. One prosecution witness testified that Setarko attended another meeting on the morning of 7th April at Rukabu's house in Nkuli commune. There he encouraged the assembled crowd to find and crowd to file and kill Tutsis. There is no dispute that Tutsis were killed and that their property was looted. But the chamber has not found it established that Setarko was at this meeting. Another prosecution witness stated that on 7th April, he observed Setarko standing near a roadblock in Nkuli commune, while two Tutsi men named Siragwira and Ibambasi were killed by Interahamba. The defense presented evidence that no violence occurred at the roadblock on that occasion, and that these Tutsis died under different circumstances. The chamber has not found it established beyond reasonable doubt that they were killed as alleged in the indictment. It is further alleged that from 7 to 8 April, Setako harbored a Tutsi woman named Rachel at his home in Nkuli commune. When confronted by an angry mob on the morning of 8 April, he purportedly shot her in the head. <coughs> One prosecution witness testified that he observed this event. The defense presented witnesses and documentary evidence that Rachel was killed elsewhere by other persons. The allegation is dismissed. The chamber will now deal with the attack on Ruhengeri Court of Appeal. According to the indictment, Setarko provided weapons and initiated the training of militia at the Mukingu commune office on 11th April and urged them to kill Tutsis throughout the prefecture. 
around 14th April, some of these militiamen allegedly killed Tutsis taking refuge at the Ruhengeri Court of Appeal. Setako was purportedly present during the attack and congratulated the assailants afterwards. The chamber has doubts about the credibility of the witness who testified that Setako participated in the meeting of 11th April. Also, the testimony of the witness who stated that he observed Setako during the 14th April attack raises questions, in particular in light of defense evidence that Setako was on an official mission in Zaire during that period. These allegations were therefore not established. The indictment alleges that on or about 25th April, Setako ordered militiamen and soldiers at Mukamira military camp to kill Tutsis staying there. That night, around 30 to 40 Tutsis were allegedly shot. Around 11th May, Setako purportedly returned to the camp with around 10 Tutsis and ordered their death. Two prosecution witnesses provided convincing and largely corroborated accounts of Setako's presence at the camp on 25th April and 11th May, as well as the ensuing killings of Tutsis, which followed his instructions on both occasions. The chamber has found this evidence credible. The testimony of the defense witnesses who did not know about these events carried only limited weight. Accordingly, the chamber finds Setako responsible for the killing of 30 to 40 Tutsis at Mukamira military camp on 25th April and the death of around 10 others there on 11th May 1994. The indictment alleges that Setako attended a ceremony in mid-May 1994 in Mukingo commune for the installation of juvenile Kajelijeli as Burgmester. Setako purportedly congratulated the inter Hamva and urged them to kill Tutsis in neighboring areas. The prosecution relied on one witness. The chamber has not found this testimony credible. The chamber will now address allegations concerning Kigali. The prosecution submits that Setako served as the unofficial liaison officer between the Ministry of Defense and the Interahamva in the Kigaliville prefecture from April to July 1994. The purpose was to supply weapons to militia groups in the city. The prosecution relies primarily on hearsay evidence. The chamber has not found the allegation proved beyond reasonable doubt. The indictment also alleges that during the events in 1994, militiamen looted and destroyed property in Kigali following orders or encouragement from Setako. There is no dispute that widespread looting occurred in Kigali, as it did in the Rohingya prefecture. But the prosecution presented no evidence of Setako's connection to these crimes. His responsibility has therefore not been established. The last event of this summary relates to a roadblock in Kigali. Two prosecution witnesses claimed that in May 1994, Setako drove two Tutsi girls to the Peage roadblock in Kigali and ordered the Interahamwe there to kill them. 
The Chamber has some doubts about the credibility of these witnesses, and it is not quite clear that they testified about the same location. The prosecution has not proved this allegation beyond reasonable doubt. Verdict. The Chamber has found Ephraim Setarko responsible, pursuant to Article 6.1 of the statute, for ordering the killing of 30 to 40 refugees at the Mukamira military camp on 25th April 1994, and for the killing of around 10 Tutsis at the camp on 11th May 1994. Setako is therefore guilty of genocide, extermination as crime against humanity, and violence to life as a war crime. He is not guilty of complicity in genocide, murder as a crime against humanity, and pillage as a war crime. The Chamber has considered the gravity of each of the crimes for which Satako has been convicted, as well as aggravating and mitigating circumstances. The Chamber sentences Ephraim Satako to a single sentence of 25 years of imprisonment. He shall remain in the custody of the tribunal pending transfer to the state where he will serve his sentence. This marks the end of the trial. The court is adjourned. All rise.